So hi everyone, me Bipul and Rishi as a part of our MCL 321 project work will be introducing you to a battery pack construction of an electric vehicle. Every battery pack consists of around 100 of cells. These cells can be of different types. First one of them is a cylindrical cell which have a low packing efficiency but can handle high internal pressure and but are difficult to modularize. Then comes the rectangular or prismatic type of cells which have around medium packing efficiency but it is easier to modul modularize. And after that comes the pouch, pouch type of cells. This have a high packing efficiency of around 0.96 to 0.99. As a result, they occupy less space and provide high energy density, but they are lower in capacity and more susceptible to mechanical damage. Based on these advantages and disadvantages, these types of cells found applications in different products, such as the pouch cells are found in high energy density requirements like that of a racing, racing car. Now, let us see a lithium polymer pouch cell. So this is an illustration of a lithium polymer pouch cell which have a nominal voltage of 3.75 volt and has a, can, re, can work up to a voltage of around 4.15 volt. Then this, uh, these cells are then stacked together into a module. This, uh, if we talk about this module, it has a configuration of 12 S2P. That is 12 such cells are placed in series and two such series are then placed in parallel. Now, these eight modules are stacked together to form a battery pack. In a battery pack, there are two main types of design. Under the floor battery design, the, in this type of design, the batteries are placed under the floor of the vehicle because of which the center of gravity of the vehicle lowers. It allows for more stability of the vehicle. These types of batteries also affect the structural integrity of the system in various ways. Now there are another types called stacked battery design. These are more compact arrangements where the batteries are stacked one upon another. Because of this, it is more difficult to efficiently cool these types of systems. Uh, on the, yes. So, as we know, however we make cells, each cells are not identical. And with degradation with time, these differences become more. As a result, to manage a battery or to control the voltage provided by a battery, we require a battery management system. And in our case, each module, as discussed before, consists of a modular management system. And as an input, it takes, uh, takes the voltage of the cell, temperature of the cell, flow of the coolant, and based on the requirements, it optimizes the value of the input parameters. This and this modular blocks are then finally connected to a battery management module. The BMS, if we talk about it, has, it is responsible for battery life cycle optimization, cell and module balancing, and the data from BMS can be used for testing and statistical measurements of the battery. Cooling systems are an important part of any battery, battery pack design. There are two main types of cooling systems tab cooling systems and surface cooling systems. In tab cooling systems, the, the aluminum tabs are connected to each of the battery which can conduct the heat to outside of each module and these tabs are then cooled instead of cooling the battery directly. This allows for a more uniform cooling of the entire battery pack. The second type is surface cooling systems. In this, the coolant cools the surface of the battery pack directly because of which there is often a case of a non-uniform cooling. This non-uniform cooling of the battery pack lowers the battery pack lifetime. Next slide. Uh, in the accelerator car that we reviewed, the battery pack design, the battery pack used a tab plus surface cooling systems. On the left hand side, you can see there is a module which has a tab, uh, which is a, a coated aluminum coated aluminum sheet. On the right hand side, you can see that the surface of the modules are cooled directly for which there are slots on the modules. They, we have also shown the picture of the air column on the air coolers on the top. These pump the air from the environment to the battery pack to cool the battery systems directly. Now we will, re we will look at the demonstrations from the lab. Hi everyone, today we are demonstrating you a lithium ion battery pack. 
so the lithium ion battery pack is made using stacking the lithium polymer batteries. The chemistry of the lithium polymer battery shown to you is LiCO2. It consists of a cathode and anode uh, which are stacked together layer by layer by using a separator. Such uh, pulses are um, first laid out into a module which consists of 12 S2P, that is 12 cells in series and 2 cells in battery uh, in parallel. Such modules are then stacked together to form a battery pack which, which have the con configuration 96 S2P. Thus, in total, we have 192 cells. The total voltage which can be provided by a battery pack is around 400 volts. A single cell, if we talk about, have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts and uh, its maximum voltage is limited up to 4.15 volts. The, the handling of such cells are done using a high voltage gloves which, have, which can limit up to, which can be used up to 1000 volts. So, in this module, uh, this uh, this is the most positive terminal cathode, this is the most negative terminal anode. In this battery, in this module, we have uh, we have sensors inside here and we have, this is the wire which carries the information about the uh, temperature of the battery and this battery, this wire carries the information about the uh, voltage across batteries. So uh, this, these wires are connected, connected to a battery management uh, system, uh, a battery management system slab. Slab. There are eight such slabs for eight such modules, which are finally connected to a, a final, a final node or final battery management system. So in this, the temperature is measured for only 50% of the cells, which is sufficient in this case, and uh, voltage is measured across all the cells. So the battery we have described till yet is a air cooled has an air cooled mechanism for regulating its temperature. So the heat from the battery is set away with, with the help of air through the mechanism of conduction and convection and the hot air is thrown out of these vents as can be seen by you. I will also like to demonstrate you the wire we talked about which have the voltage and temperature data are fed to this. And as you can see, there is a voltage indicator which will indicate at all times what is the voltage uh, provided by the battery. So through this mechanism, we can regulate the temperature and voltage of the battery. So this concludes our brief introduction to the nuances of battery pack design. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you.